We've got Sherwood Forest Elementary, which was a 5 out of 10. And we also are going to look at Griffith Elementary, which was ranked a 1 out of 10. You can kind of see their quick ratings really fast there. Um, if you see the student progress is 70% of the, of the weighted score, whereas their equity is 30%. That's a nice feature. That's um, one of the newer features. And then also, of course, Jefferson Elementary. Um, so we start, let's start off with Sherwood Forest because it's a 5 out of 10. It's right down in the middle. If you notice, their test scores are 10 out of 10. And um, that looks awesome. But then when you look down at student progress, you're like, wait a second, what's happening here? How are their test scores a 10 out of 10 and their student progress is only 3 out of 10? That's really is what's bringing Sherwood Forest down to a 5 out of 10 because they said the student progress is 70% uh, of the score. So that's really, that's really a lot going on there. So let's take a look first off at our students. So if we go down to the students, if you notice here for Sherwood Elementary, 76% um, of the students are white. And uh, whereas the uh, lower percentage of the students are black or Hispanic or two or more races, they also only have 19% of their families come from low income families. Now, this is important because we know from research, if you look back at my, at my blog post, you can, you can look at the links for that research. There's a lot of research that shows that students that are in poverty actually end up um, having a lot of environmental challenges that uh, we have yet to find other than other than school-wide response to intervention models we've yet to find any type of educational implementation that can outweigh those environmental factors that hurt children in poverty some of those factors include um, not having as many books, not having time with their parents as much as other students because their parents are typically working in the evening or working two shifts. Um, so there's all these things that are working against students that come from poverty. Um, so that's why this is really important to take a look at. Um, so the school, when we are um, considering these scores, we need to take into consideration of the percentage of low income and this percentage of minorities because in Winston-Salem there's still a higher percent of minorities in poverty than there are white. Now if you look at the teachers, the teachers are 14 to 1 for their student per teacher average um, and they have 100% of the teachers have three or more years of experience. So that means these are consistent teachers. These are teachers that are showing up for work, that have are interested in teaching. So this this there's good things happening here at Sherwood. Uh, and so why on earth did they get a five out of ten? Why aren't their students improving? Why did their um, student progress scores get so low? Now. When you look at that, you say, okay, student progress, 3 out of 10, worrisome sign. You're like, what's happening here? Um, and it might very well be that they are struggling. Um, they're struggling with uh, those students um, that are in poverty. And, and that, is a, that is a real factor that, as professionals, we don't have a great solution for that yet. Um, there are um, there continues to be a gap between white student achievement and minority student achievement, and this school shows that. This school says this equity one out of ten is showing that there are a ton of white students in this school, and um, here we go. There are a ton of white students in this school, and for uh, their and for the students that are minorities, they are struggling to close that gap. Probably what we're seeing here is that most of the minority students in the school are also in poverty. That's probably what's happening because we see at other schools where there's more diversity, um, there's less of a struggle there. So probably these students are from poverty and they're struggling with that. So let's look a little bit closer really quickly. <clears throat> Oh, goodness. All right. So I'm going to go back up to the top.
These are their suspension rates. So if you could tell this school is taking care of their students, all they have way less than the state average for suspensions. The point of this, this uh, Sherwood Forest, it would be a fantastic school to put your kid in because look at how well they are handling behaviors at their school. There's like, behavior is like non-existent. Let's check their absent. Okay, so okay, this is what we want to look at. When we have two or more races, so somebody who's minority and black students who are slightly below the state average, but still a lot, they are having a lot of absenteeism. And, and when kids don't come to school, what they found is that is typically a, oh, that's a creepy ad on the corner. Sorry, guys. That's typically a sign that they're um, coming from poverty, which goes along with the fact that um, with this equity overview, they're struggling to get kids uh, up back to close that gap where white students are performing more. So this school is a good school. I would recommend this school. Look at the parents that love this school. I would not let a 5 out of 10 hurt your chances for going to Sherwood Forest Elementary because that what you're seeing here, the reason why their student progress equity overview is lower is because those students are in poverty and they are struggling to, those teachers are uh, struggling to do the impossible, what everyone is struggling with. Everyone is struggling with how do you get kids in poverty um, out of poverty? How do we fight against those things? So Sherwood Forest, this rating is a slightly misleading. What this rating is actually telling us is that this school has some minorities that are in poverty and they're struggling just like everybody else to get those students up. So I would uh, take a look at that um, and I, I wouldn't let that keep you from going there. Now, let's jump to Griffith Elementary so we don't take too long here. One out of ten. Your first glance, you're like, what the? This school is struggling. There's only eight reviews. Um, there's about just as many kids. What is happening here? Let's take a look. So let's look at the students first. If you notice, Griffith Elementary, the first thing that is way different is that this school is a majority Hispanic or Latino. Um, and look here, 99% of students come from low income. 99% of the students here are from poverty. What the? Bam. That's mind boggling. So Griffith Elementary School is located in an area of town where there's cheaper housing. You're a little bit farther from a lot of green spaces, a lot of parks. Um, you can find a lot of apartments. You can find a lot of trailer homes. There's a lot of trailer parks. And so there's a lot of affordable housing down there. So naturally, that's going to attract people who are in poverty who need affordable housing. What does that mean for, for this school? Why on earth, why does on earth did they get a 1 out of 10? Okay, let's take a look. Oh, this is very important also. Student per teacher. This is actually less. You actually get, there's actually um, one less child for every teacher in this school. So they have slightly less class sizes. Same, you still have 100% of the teachers with three or more experience. Three or more years of experience. That means you have highly qualified students teachers working with these students. So why on earth are they getting a 1 out of 10? What's happening at this school? Is it really that terrible? And what we know from um, statistics with low income students, we do not have um, a ton of successful strategies that outweigh those effects of poverty. What we know from these facts is way lower than the state average for the um, percent of students with um, poverty, percent of students that are in poverty, and then these are showing their math scores, their science scores. Oh, science scores look good, and their reading scores here. Um, what we see is that students from poverty struggle to learn. They come in behind, and they stay behind, and we have yet to find a way to catch those kids up. And that's what you see here. That's why they're getting a 1 out of 10. If you notice, when we jump to their discipline and attendance, a lot of people um, immediately when they think, okay, fine, this school has good professionals. The only reason why they're, um, 
why they got a 1 out of 10, why their scores are bad, is because those kids are from poverty. A lot of parents still will run away from that school saying, I don't want to put my kid in with a bunch of kids from poverty because think of all the behavioral issues that are going to be happening. Guys, look at this. Look at their percentage of suspensions. Way less than the state average. Way less. Less, less, less. Okay? And um, especially... Um, looking at all students, you see for their black students, it's it's a little bit higher than the other ones, but it's still way lower than the state average. So, oh, sorry for that uh, funny text message right then. Uh, so, what we need to talk about, uh, what this means for this school, is that Griffith Elementary School is is actually has um, professional teachers, they're managing behaviors, they are just fighting against an entire school and the effects of, pro of poverty on their students. Also, let's take a look at the percentage. Actually, they're struggling managing their white students here, uh, getting their white students to school. Um, so that again probably means that these kids are all in poverty because that is typically a predict one of the side effects of being from poverty is not putting a high emphasis of school or things like I don't know if you missed the school bus there's no way to get to school things like that happen um, and the